Yes, sir. Islamism. Yeah, we just trying to get this um, link for our family out there in the media on point for our family. So Islam, Islam, Islamism without the schism. Let us rise upon the seven within the circle of justice, mercy, love, and right, and give all praises to the great God Allah, Father God Allah, and honors to his holy prophet, honors to our holy prophet, noble Drew Ali, Al-Hajj Sharif Abdu Ali, that is. We give honors to our Moorish kin once again here, there, and everywhere, and therefore honors to all of you who are continuously honoring yourselves by being yourselves. I want to give honors to our Grand National Seal, I want to give honors to our Grand National Emblem, National Flag, Divine Constitution and Bylaws, and honors to all of you who are indeed a living manifestation and personification of everything. And I do mean everything that our Holy Prophet brought to make us a nation. I want to welcome you to another Moorish Prospectus. And I'm your host instructor, Dr. Shahid Imani Amohadi Shabazel. And my ancient committee in high name being the same as Dr. Shedawin Minti El Muhajit Shepsuel. And uh, we have a grand drawing family to bring forth to you tonight in our Moorish Prospectus. You know, and we will be coming from our new chapter, The Divine Origin of the Asiatic Nations. And we will most definitely be going into uh, one of the most powerful ayats you know, that our holy prophet ever uh, brought forth, so to speak. You know, this is a powerful demonstration. It's going to be a grand, grand class family. Um, we got a grand uh, measure to bring forth and a lot of ground to cover, you know, in a capsule of time, so to speak. So we're going to be dealing with Ayat 2. The key of civilization was and is in the hands of the Asiatic nations. Just that alone is a powerful statement. The key of civilization was and is. He's speaking of the past and he's speaking of the present and also the future. Was and is. Was is has been. Is is right now. Is in this context actually had to do with Somewhat like the prophet was decreeing a, a, a perpetual covenant that the key of civilization will always be in our hands. But we are taught here in the Moorish American government that the hand is symbolic to the mind. You see, the hand is symbolic to the mind. And um, it goes on to say the Moors who were the ancient Moabites and the founders of the holy city of Mecca, who were the ancient Moabites, Right. It say, and the founders of the holy city of Mecca. So we can see again, you know, the work of the ancestors. You know, and many people like to criticize, you know, the name Moorish, and they have no idea what this name Moorish come from. They have no idea that, you know, uh, we named ourselves, contrary to popular belief, where you have people out here pushing a narrative, talking about the European name us Moorish. You know, when we know that more to us represent those who are more gods than mere men. You see? How are European going to make that? The European makes slaves. That's the only thing they ever made in America. You see? Outside of that, you know, manufacturing a Negro, a so-called black man, a so-called colored man, then what is it that this European actually has made that is of worth that has benefited you? Answer yourself that question. So the Moors who were the ancient Moabites, see, listen to what's being said. The Moors who were the ancient Moabites. It didn't say the Moors who were the Moabites, mm -hmm. the mere Moabites. It said the Moors who were the ancient Moabites. You see? So when we say that right there in and of itself, family, um, that in and of itself is a grand drawing. That's a grand drawing, family. So give me one second here. Let me make sure I want to correct this. 
Okay, um, I want to make sure. Can our family in the conference call hear me clearly out there? Because this demonstration be fluctuating. I just want to make sure. I... Uh, it's coming up and down. Okay. Like we'll hear you clearly, and then it'll go very, very low. Okay, one second here. Let me see if anything is stuck into some dust or something. Okay, give us a second here. Okay, uh, is it a steady now, Grand National Secretary of the State? Yes, sir. Okay, gratitude. Islam. Gratitude. Islamism. So, yeah, um, when we go into the measure what we were speaking and we talk about the <clears throat> the ancient Moabites, you know, this is totally different than you thinking, you know, of, oh, these are the Moabites that they talk about biblically. And, you know, yeah, that's part of the measure, too. But when we say ancient, just think of indigenous. When we say ancient, just think of aboriginal. Because we use that terminology too. The true natives of the land, the people that were there from the beginning. This is what we're talking about. You know, and just because we use the name Moabites don't mean we wasn't going by another name. We use the word Moorish like Europeans and NBCs today like to use the word black. You know, the same way they use that word as a descriptive. We use it not only as a descriptive, but we also use it as that which attach us to the land. So when we say Moorish, we're not going by any European definition because we know that the Romans got their particular definition and their words, you know, uh, from what branched off from the natives. The natives named themselves the Mari. And the name Mari translate to Moor, a Moorish, you see? And every other people end up coming up with their name, Moreno, Morisco, based on whatever language it was. Only an ignorant person, you know, will continue to carry on talking about more me, Morisco, more me, Moreno, and don't know nothing about etymology. Ain't studied etymology, couldn't tell you what etymology mean, you know, or none of that. But they swear up and down, the European created the word more. But when you give them the same measure and you say, well, we got proof right here that he created the word black and that he started referring to people as black people and white people and colored people and so forth and so on. We got the proof of this. Then they want to change, you know, the narrative, so to speak, or they want to move the goalposts. You see, the, they can say the European created the word Moorish but they don't want to admit that the European created the word black. You see what I'm saying? So you see how crazy and insane our people is? You see? So if you're going to try to have some negative energy brought against the Moors from what you think, and you don't even know, you're just going off of what somebody told you, ain't did no research. We already know who we're dealing with when we hear that nonsense. <laughs> you know, we know that we dealing with somebody that don't know what they talking about. They going off of what somebody told them and that's it. They ain't did no research, no independent research. They just talking, they just yip yapping. So, you know, when it come down to dealing with uh, those who truly honor, you know, this paradigm, then we know the truth. You know, we told you what original word come from and then how it becomes what it becomes in English. After that, right there, someone to do their research, study self and be self. But if one have their mind made up that no matter what you tell them, they ain't going to listen, then basically, you know, you can't really penetrate, you know, that type of thought pattern because it is comfortable, you know, in being enslaved and being misled, run amok. Let astray, yeah, we, all that. So having this knowledge, then when we understand who the original inhabitants of the land today that people call Moab, you know, the original Moabites, who were they? They were the ancient Cushites. 
And we saying that because the term Kush was used for those who were in the territory of India, the Dewipa, the Kush, the Harappian culture was a Kushitic culture. You see? The culture that you found in the Nile Valley civilization was a Kushite culture. In pre-Islamic Arabia, before Muhammad even set foot in the land, when he was a baby, his wet nurse was a Kushite. You see? And we can go on and on and on. But we don't want to be redundant here. One thing that we ain't going to never do, family, is sugarcoat the truth. We don't care who it, who, who it offend. You know, we're going to give you this. You're going to get this work. Somebody else might play with you and try to appease to that, you know, logical fallacy, you know, that we have accepted as being our reality. But we ain't going to play with your family. We're going to give you the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help the God redeem you. You know, so when we go into this special measure family, we understand that we indigenous to the planet. Then it's not hard to comprehend when we were the ancient Moabites. Then it's not hard to comprehend when we were uh, the original people who inhabited the Arabian Peninsula, as they like to call it. Then it's not hard to understand how we was the original people that established ourselves in the area that they now call Canaan or Kanana. You see, then it's not hard to understand you know, that we was all over the place, family, and we done showed our people this over and over and over and over and over again. You know, but only the pure in heart can see their king. Only the people that want the truth are going to get the truth. Those who are content with the lie, you know, will forever accept the lie. You see? And so we're not concerned with browbeating a dead horse, so to speak. We're only concerned with giving our people the truth. We're only concerned with elevating the consciousness of our people. We're only concerned of bringing our people up out of the muck and the maya, you know, of being misused and abused by every other culture outside, you know, of our own. You see? So um, there's a lot of work to be done. We have our work cut out for us, you know, and I encourage our family, get the materials, get get the, you know, the things that uh, will give you the truth and get up out of these echo chambers, you know, with these people that ain't going to teach you this stuff that we teach in family. You know, I'm actually, um, like I say, I, I got so much stuff in my archives, it's crazy. You know, just dealing with the divine origin of the Asiatic nations alone, you know, we have went over these subject matters on numerous different occasions. And uh, we have not failed when it comes to bringing our people to truth. The key is, is acceptance. How many of us are willing to accept the truth when the truth is before us? You see, how many of us are willing to accept the truth? See, that's, the, that's the, uh, the key question, you know, because the mind would never accept what it's unwilling to receive. Make no mistake about it, family. Make no mistake about it. So we have to keep reminding our people, using the hammer of repetition over and over and over again. If you wonder why we have to do this, because some of our people can get this same information, we can give it to them over and over again. And they'll still act like they don't know what it is that you gave them. They'll still act as if, you know, uh, they have no knowledge of what it is that you showed them. They forget. They forget, family. I'm going to do something because it, it's been a minute since I did this. I'm going to show you something real quick because I got a lot of this stuff. Like I always tell you, all y'all got to do is follow me on Facebook. And um, you can definitely go into my archives, you know, because I got it all over the place. And if you look right here on the center of the screen, 
look, I want you to look close at this. It's important that we see this. Let me go back over here. I'm going to try to blow it up for you a little bit more. Right? I want you to look at that very closely. Now, this is coming from a Hebrew dictionary. It's a note dealing with the word cam. Now, for those who know linguistics, know of what we speak of, you know, and we call it sound shifting. Now, you got a lot of people like to run their mouth and go to Holland. Ham wasn't the real people. And this show you how ignorant somebody is when it comes to dealing with the language. You know, if you look right here, you see it. This is the cat, cat right here. And then I don't have no vowels in here. This is just a CH and this is M right here. These two letters. This is the CH. This is the M. Cat, cam. This is the mem, mem, mem right here. Cat, mem, cam. So the only difference between cam and ham is that a C is at the front of it. Now, it's Hebrew now, as they like to call it, uh, Canaanite language. Well, isn't there a word in ancient Kemet also known as Kim? It's simple. And some people would tell you, oh, you can't do that. The only person say that is somebody that don't know linguistics. Don't listen to them, people. They don't know what they're talking about. We got zero tolerance for them now. We ain't got no, we ain't playing with them. So Cam and Ham. So in the Hebrew definition, as they like to call it, they say it means hot or warm, right? But then it says applicable to the north of Africa, where the Numidians and the dark and swarthy Mauritanians or Moors worship Amen Ra. Hmm. So we know about the temple of Amen Ra. We know that it was the ancient Kushites who established and venerated Amen Ra. So now you see the connection between those who call themselves Kushites and the Moors. I'm speaking to those who know history. If you don't know history, don't doubt this information without doing your own research. Don't doubt this information and you know you ain't studied it. But those who studied know exactly what I'm talking about. I ain't got to make no references. I ain't got to pull out no books because they know what I'm talking about. And if you hear me right now, you don't know what I'm talking about. That means that you got to go study. So you ain't got no business trying to rebut this information if you don't know what I'm talking about. I don't care who taught you what they taught you. I don't care what they were supposed to know. I don't care what degree they supposed to have. Bachelors, masters, associates, none of that. Because that's a European education and ain't nothing wrong with getting one. But it don't pervade that which has to do with the oral traditions and that which come from our ancestors. You see, we will never put Roman scholarship above our own. Ain't got nothing to do with, ain't got nothing to do with uh, racism. It has everything to do with realism. So when we go into this special measure, watch this. It says, Amen, Amun, the sun, otherwise, Jupiter, Amen, represented by Cam. Now you would have this type of stuff in Hebrew dictionaries because they swear our people were idolaters. But contrary to popular belief, See, this is where you get truth and falsehood strangely mixed. They're telling you who the Moors is on one hand. They're telling you that these are descendants of Cam and Ham and so forth and so on, as they call it, right? But all the while, they also saying, well, they worship the sun. No, our people venerated the sun. They respected the sun. They didn't worship the sun. That's a, that's a lie. You see? So you got a partial truth mixed with a falsehood, just in this definition alone. You see? And it's a lot of information out there like that. So you got to be aware of that. You got to be weary of that. You know what I mean? And on another level, you know, the word Mar, we already showed you in Mari, is connected to Amin-Ra already. Amin-Ra, the name Mar is one of the attributes or the names of Amin-Ra. If you look up 
this measure in the uh, G G Egyptian dictionary. You have some people say in the modern, oh, that's aim and OP. You know what I mean? And people take that and run with it. But we deal with the truth over here. We don't play no game with our people. You know, and I have more all over the place, you know, to support this stuff right here. Like, just, here's another here. This is an old definition. Marusha. You know, genes. This is like from the 1600s. It's from a dictionary from the 1600s family. You know, so it says another name for the Mari or ancient Moorish race. Notice it said ancient Moorish race. So for those who think that the Moors only popped up during the medieval times, why do you think this dictionary here called them the ancient Moorish race? So now when you hear ancient Moabites, now it should make some sense to you. Now it should make perfect sense to you when you hear that. I'm just going through definition right here. Here's another measure coming from that same measure here. And there were two different Mauritanias. A lot of people don't know Mauritania stretched from Egypt all the way into West Africa, across the Sahel and all that. You know, ancient Mauritania. Modern Mauritania is isolated where we see Mauritania at today. So you got to know the difference between ancient Mauritania and modern Mauritania. Modern Mauritania you know, it's just that little piece up there next to Morocco. Ancient Mauritania covered the whole of North Africa. Know the history. This ain't something we're ma making up. You can go look this up. It says Africa, right? It says Septentrionis, Mauritania. It says the ancients. They divided it into the four great provinces, Mauritania, Numidia, Africa, and Lydia, Libya. So Mauritania, Numidia, Africa, and Libya, they were subdivided, but they were originally all known again as Mauritania. We got maps to prove this. You understand? So they go into the name of the superficial extent of these divisions, you know, and they, be, they showed them in the tables, you know, of who these people were. Then they gave square miles of the land and everything, Mauritania. Uh, to Gitania, and then we got Mauritania, uh, Caesar Ennius, uh, then we got Mauritania, Sitif, uh, Sitifinus, uh, as they call it, and then we have Numidia, and we have Zig Zigitania, and they're going all through these different places, but all of them represented Mauritania at one time. See it right here? Mauritania. See, it says Mari. You can see Mar, M A. U R E. The E is interchangeable with I. So sometimes you'll see M A U R I. Right? Mauritania. Mauritania was the northwestern province of Africa, right? And derived its name from its inhabitants. There it go. It derived, I want y'all to hear this, and derive its name, Mauritania, from its inhabitants. It did not derive its name from no Greeks. Stop listening to the liars. It did not, they did not uh, derive their name from no Romans. See, we got to kill that nonsense. You see? Zero tolerance. So anyway, the Greeks at first called the people Marusi. So this is the name that the Greeks was calling them. This is the Greek term. Not more, not Moorish. They called them Marusi. You understand? See, people should know this right here, but when they don't think you know no better, they try to slip anything in there on your family. Stop letting these people tell you anything. It says Marusi and the country Marusia, which they were followed by some Latin poets. So the Latin people came after the Greeks and then they come up with their name. But they afterward adopted. What does adopted mean? If a child was adopted from a parent, then most likely the parent that's doing the adopting adopted this child from the birth parent. You understand? That means that the original birth parent 
is the one that these people that adopted the child got the child common sense. So if they say here, the Latin poets and the Greeks, they afterward adopted the proper appellations of Mari and Mauritania, that means they adopted it from the inhabitants. See, it says inhabitants, meaning the native people, meaning the aboriginal people, meaning the uh, 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 the ancient again. So the Greeks, again, I'm going to say this again for the ones in, that, that don't hear it. The Greeks and the Romans adopted the word Mari from the inhabitants. They came up with their own names, you know, but it says they afterward adopted the proper appellations of Mari in Mauritania. So they, that means the Greeks adopted Mari and Mauritania into their language. They didn't give that to the Moors. Stop letting people lie to you and tell you that. Stop letting them tell you that, family. I got to drive this home because people, they do it all the time. So it says, taken as a whole, it was exceedingly, an exceedingly fruitful country and sent great quantities of corn to Rome and other parts of Italy. Some portions of it, however, were too mountainous and arid to be capable of any cultivation. Besides the corn the Romans obtained from it and Numidia, it says very beautiful marble precious stones, as well as a number of wild beasts for their exhibitions and spectacles in the later ages were subdivided into three provinces. And they gave it to you. I just spoke of them a few minutes ago. And all this is Mauritania. Tetagenia. And then uh, Caesarinus, and then uh, it says Citifinus is basically what it is. But then it says the first of these alone was the original country known to the Romans as Mauritania. And then they didn't give it the name Mauritania, people. It was known to them because they adopted it from the inhabitants, the two last form in the western part of what they call Numidia. You see? So these places represented one particular area, and then later on, you know, they were split up. You see? And this way in 2021, 21, you see what I said? Like I said, the Mari named themselves, and so-called Greeks adopted that name into their own language. Once you understand that right there, you can't be deceived no more. It's necessary that you know this stuff right here, though, before we go any further. We got to remove the cobwebs of confusion. Like, here we go right here, Africa. See, a lot of people don't know Africa was just one little small spot. It was actually the spot that is called today Carthage. Ifriqia, you know, was known as Africa originally. It wasn't the whole of the continent. It became later on known as the whole of the continent. But it says Asia, it says originally applied to the peninsula of which uh, carrier, and there's a language that deals with carrier that you need to know because that's actually the original alphabet. It says of which the peninsula carrier form the western extremity. This is in the Iberian Peninsula too. You find a lot of the carrier language. It says the affiliation was gradually extended to the whole continent. See? See, see, Asia was originally extended gradually to the whole country. In this sense, it is used by Herodotus, who remarks that Egypt did not belong either to Asia or Africa. It says the now being generally viewed, even in the time of Strobo, as the boundary of the two continents. The term Libya was sometimes used in the same extensive acceptation. That's real talk because. We got maps that that whole area, same area we was talking about Mauritania, was actually known as Libya at one time. The whole other map was referred to as Libya at a time, depending on the map you was using. Go back to the 1500s. Sometime used in the same extensive acceptation, it says um, time district between the greatest uh, uh, Syrtis and Egypt. The natives of Africa are divided by Herodotus into two races, the Africans and the Ethiopians. See there? One possessing the northern 
and the other the south part. By these nations, remarks Major Rennell, are evidently intended the Moors and Negroes. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It says, which two classes are distinct in the present day in ancient times, as in ancient times. So a Negro has always been distinguished from a Moor. You see? It says, are as distinct at the present day as in ancient times and apparently have not greatly varied their ancient limits. Although the Negroes may in many instances have received new masters from among the Moors, it says the common boundary of Africans and Ethiopians in ancient times may be placed at the southern border of the Great Desert. And they're talking about the area that they call Yemen and all that right there. So, you know, this is a powerful demonstration, family. Like even right here, this is like 600 years before Muhammad, the Moors were known as the Numende, the Mari, and the Musulami. Before the Moors converted to Islam, there were those who were known as the Musulami 600 years prior to Muhammad. 600 years before Muhammad. Before there were Muslims, there were the, Mu, the, the Mari uh, Musulami. Go figure. Hmm. So, you know, these are just uh, certain things that I've shown over the years, but it's always good to revisit, you know, and look these things up. You know, that way our people get it. See it right there, what they were showing? Here it is, a prime example. See how they're showing the whole continent of what it's called. See, this is the Nile Valley civilization right here on this map. See this Sinaitis, Arabicus? This would be Mecca and all that over here, the Arabian Peninsula. It's supposed to be Africa, what we call it, right? Look what this whole continent is being referred to on this map. Libya. Ethiopia's here. And then when you come down here, they go to area, Mauritania. This is Atlantis here. You see? This is what a cat structure at. Well, you can see the water had ran off the earth after the flood that took place in that particular area. You see? See, Africa is just a small little place up here on this map. In the corner. This is Carthage. You think I'm playing? That said right? Carthage. I'm telling you this stuff off my head, but I know what I'm talking about because I done studied it. So people think I be making this stuff up. You know what I mean? But anyway, um, as you can see, you know, this word Mari, you know, is a very ancient word because it always referred to the land and the man. See the water, you know, the Aegeum, Mari, Tarihim, Mari. And this goes all the way back to the Egyptian language. You know, so see where it says Mari, Ethiopia. This is a name for the water. The land, air, and the water, family. Look here. Mari Persicum. Mari Erythraeum. Yeah. Come on, man. We can't make this stuff up. So anyway. And that's another thing, too. Stop using these maps right here talking about some flat earth. No, people, this is just a map that depicts an aerial view as if you were looking at the world from on high. This ain't got nothing to do with no flat earth, family. So we're going to kill that nonsense and that noise as well. This has all to do with looking at a map as if you were looking at it from an aerial view, as if you were standing on top or above the world, looking down people. That's why it looked like this. Not because the earth is flat. Stop it. So, oh, we just had to add that in there too. Uh, I pardon myself. Pardon myself. So, <clears throat> let me go to this other area over here. We're going to set the record straight. You know, and over here you see it right here. I see if you look closely at this map, you will see Atlantis again was in the land of the Mari which became Mauritania, the same location where the Ibero Marujan and the Jabir Uhud of 350,000 years old was recently found. And the Jabir Uhud is the oldest hominid that they had found over there. 
They was also known as the Lanthropus Morantanicus. We done proved all this stuff in the past, family. These are what you talk about when you say ancient Moorish people. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Man. You know, so yeah, it's a, it's a whole lot in here, family. Like I said before, though, we are indigenous to the planet. Don't you let nobody tell you nothing different. And I created this for that very purpose to show our people. And I'll go back to a time that I say we are the only ones in denial. The world knows who we are. So I showed a picture of Israel, an Israelite. Look at this. Now you tell me, is that a European? No. Then I had one from Spain. Look at the features on this person from Spain. If you think, then go to Europe. Look at that. Look at that melanin right there. Go to Italy. Look at it. Greece. Y'all know this is my favorite picture right here. The brother with the locks. Greece. Look at him. He got the staff of Tehuti in his hand and everything. Right? So now, let's go to India then. The Kushites. The Indus Kushite Valley Civilization. You can even look behind mama and see them babies back there. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but... And then look here. Our brother Yehoshua. He got four locks in his head, look like, right? Probably more than that, maybe by seven. We just can't see the other three that's hanging down in the bike. But you see it. Look at this. Saudi Arabia. All these pictures from these cultures. Look at the hue on that brother right there. These are real pictures, too, by the way, that was drawn, you know, by those who were depicting the people in that area. We already know all saw in Egypt, Nubia. So we got India, Jerusalem, Arabia, Egypt, Nubia. And every last one of these people, as it relates to our people, was as melanated as ever. We can't make this stuff up. We can't make it up, people. You know, so when we talk about the divine origin of the Asiatic nation, here it is right here. And I showed this to our people a couple of times. This is a prime example of what I'm talking about. But the trained eye uh, can on, this is only the train I can see this. The original Indus Kushites are descendants of the Meru Kushites. The Indus Kushites are the people of India. The Meru Kushites are the original Nubians who inhabited the Nile Valley civilization. These are the people who created the, uh, the uh, Temple of Amun Ra and so forth and so on. They venerated them. It says, and I said, their fairs and shinti is clear evidence. So these one literally got a fez on their head, too. See that fez he got on his head here? See the fez right here on his head? Push eyes, man. See that fez on his head? Come on, man. We can't make this up. And then we see the fez here. We know this is the fez because it's red. It's even red. See that fez on his head? Then do his kush eyes. But then when we look around his waist, we see that this one actually has an Egyptian shinti on. What is a person of India doing with this type of dress around their waist? That's the attendance. That's the sign right there with the rays that come down from it. Why would an Indus Kushite have this on? Unless that at some time had some type of connection, which we done already showed you. They are descendants of the uh, Meru Kushites, the place that is known as Sabah, or Sheba, in the Bible, in the Quran. Same people. So when I say divine origin of Asiatic nation, do it make sense now? Do it make any sense now? When we say divine origin of the Asiatic nations. If it don't make sense, then... <laughs> We got to go back and do some research, some study. You see? So when we talk about the keys of civilization being put in the hands of the Moors, that's why the prophet said he brought us everything that it takes to save us as a nation. And all we got to do is take it and save ourselves. He didn't make it complicated. 
He brought you more science, not rocket science. I always have to make a differentiation between the two. Some of our people have no idea when it comes to dealing with the difference between the two. So, yeah, family, y'all already know what time it is. We ain't even got to go uh, any further, really, with this here. I mean, that right there should kill all the conversation. And for those who think perhaps that we just playing, we're going to go ahead and show you something else. This is one of the oldest Bibles right here you ever find. It's called the Geneva Bible. You know, um, well, these are question and answers based upon it as well, actually. And in this book, notice it says Abed Melech, a Moor, one of the kings. They so they had this in the original books. Had they felt had they not fell out of favor with the word more, you know, you would still be seeing the word more in the original text. Big facts. Hmm. So, all you got to do is look this stuff up, family. We know who we are. Moors, Ethiopes. Same stuff I done showed you before. So, when we go into dealing with the divine origin, the Asiatic nation, this is simply speaking of your own divinity. I mean, what more is there that you need to know after that? So, if the keys of civilization was and is in the hands of the Moors, or the Asiatic nation, then that means, notice it said Asiatic nations. That means those who are children of one father provided for by his care, all of them have the power to unlock the chains of bondage that had led uh, them into a lifetime uh, and lifestyle of suffering. Suffering succotash. <laughs> but anyway, you know, they uh, have been led and misled, run amok, led astray. Terrible. And we should be tired of it at this special point. We should want better. When you know better, you do better. You see? You got to have a teacher. How can they learn save that they have a teacher? You can't learn if you want to always challenge the teacher and you ain't even came into the knowledge of where you should be along the way. But you want to jump up and beat on your chest. Talking about, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge your information. You know, this is the ego. Pride. Hate learning unless the Roman tell you, you know, something. We can go right now to our people and, and, and go to them and tell them a thing. And they'll look right over, act like there's no worth of it. And let Rome come up there. Give a little rosy, you know, expression in the midst of it. And all of a sudden, man, boy, I tell you, we ain't got to keep going over it. I'm just putting this out there, FYI, for information so that our people can follow us and know what they've been going through, know what's going on. It's time to wake up, you sleepy-headed moors. Time for you to build a nation and be a people. Huh? Islamism without the schism. So let me stop sharing my screen right now. I just really want us to ponder um, upon, you know, the definition. You know, and a lot of our people keep hollering, you know, we don't need this information to do this. We don't, well, what you done did with the information that you have? Answer that question, since we don't need this and we don't need that. What have you done to liberate your people? What have you done to uplift them? What have you done to bring them out of a state of wretchedness and darkness into this marvelous light of liberation? What have you done? We ain't going to get sidetracked. We just asking the question. Since everybody want to talk big. Yeah, so this, again, like I said, is very powerful, on point. Hmm. So, anyway, 
you know, this is the key, fam. But once you understand that you have the keys of civilization, that means that you can change your condition at any time you want to. Remember, the hand is symbolic to the mind. He didn't say he placed it into the hand of the agent. He said hands in plural. So that means all of us have the potencies of divinity and the potential to liberate ourselves. Remember, the power that exerts itself for the individual at the will of its use. Huh? The power that exerts itself for the individual at the will of its use. If you don't exert yourself, then what you think going to come up out of that situation? What you think going to come up out of that demonstration? Huh? Goodness gracious. Yeah, we got to, we got to, yeah, we got to do better. <laughs> you know, we got a lot to learn, family, in so little time, man. This little moment that we lease it on life, you know, it's here one minute, gone the next. We done did everything else, so why not be us? We've been everything that somebody else wanted us to be, so why not be us? Hmm. So the divine origins of the Asiatic nation is what we have to tap into. Our divinity is far more older than this flesh. Is not the master of the house more honorable than its walls? No, yet not. They are the temple of the Most High, the great God. You the temple. Hmm. Ooh wait. We here to build a temple of perfected man. We do know that. So when we talk about the divine origin of the Asiatic nations, we're dealing with the divine origin of all of our people. Not just one over here, one over there, look, click over here, look, click. No, the whole, the totality. Hmm. So, yeah, this is a grand drawing, family. That's all I got to say. So, I mean, it's it's always good to revisit um, information because the more that we progress, the more, you know, becomes manifest. Let me see here. Okay. So, yeah. It's crazy because a lot of this information be right out here to, uh, in front of us, family. It be right there all the while. And we just overlook it. Yeah, we have a tendency to overlook it. You know? And um, here it is again, too. This is one more. We might as well go ahead and Get this one up too. Since we went into the oven, I'm gonna share this real quick again. Okay, uh, entire screen right there. Let's say hit it there. Okay, now we're gonna go back over here. And here's another one, another excerpt. Okay, hide that. So if you look closer here, there it is. That's that ham and that cam again. The son of Noah. And so everybody be, well, hey, the Israelites got the covenant. But they don't talk about that perpetual covenant that Noah had. The Noahite covenant. But anyway, coming down from the same lineage, look, put. See here it says put. And then from that lineage come who? The Libyans and the Moors. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it is what it is, family. Then they give another rundown right here. The sons of Ham were Cush, Misraim, and Put in Canaan. Listen to it. The sons of Ham were Cush, Misraim, Put in Canaan. So what did Prophet Nobajur Ali say about the matter? Okay, so yeah, once you realize that right there, family, and you understand the divine origin of the Asiatic nations, 
and you understand that everything comes from one source. The sons of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, Canaan. Josephus writes, thus of the four sons of Ham, time is not at all hurt the name of Cush, for the Ethiopians over whom he reigned are even at this day, both by themselves and by all men in Asia, called Cushites. Huh? The memory also of the Mesraites is preserved in their name for all who inhabit this country of Judea called Egypt, Mestri. See? And the uh, Egyptians, Mestrians. Put also, listen now, Put also was the founder of Libya called the inhabitants Puttites from himself. There is also a river in the country of the Moors which bears that name which we uh, may see that the Grecian historiographers mentioned that uh, river in the adjoining country by the affiliation of Put. So, you know, all these different names have been applied to certain places. You know? So, yeah, this is a whole lot, family. Like I said, it don't get no plainer than that right there. So when you think about the keys of civilization being in the hand, the hand is symbolic to the mind. All of us are strong enough, you know, to utilize those keys and open every door that would lead to our liberation. All you got to do is study self and then look at the instruction manual. And we got plenty of them. And you can't go wrong. Do it yourself. Or what they like to call a life hack. <laughs> Yeah, so, man, all I can say is, again, a large lead on the victory show. If not us, then who? Who, Moors? Who but you? So now when somebody come to you, and they got people that wrote books on this stuff, outside of, you know, we got modern books. I know one time they were criticizing the sources, saying that's too old. We got modern books say the same thing. We have been teaching out of the African fact book. And it say the same thing. But you got people that tried to steal that, you know, and then try to redirect the course to something else as well. Hmm. So I just want to encourage my family to know that we have the keys to liberate ourselves. We have the keys to civilize ourselves and civilize humanity, to uplift the fallen within humanity. You see? The Moors who were the ancient Moabites. So when you hear that from now on, and they say the Moors, what Moors you talking about? Oh, these, these Moors came into existence at a particular time period. You know, the Romans did it. Okay. I hear you. And then you go and you do your job. Knock the nonsense out. <laughs> you know, get the job done by doing the research, family. And you can go further into this information. You got to elevate your consciousness, though. So, yeah, this is powerful. And that's what I wanted to give just going into this chapter right now. Now, the question is we have to find out what uh, doors can be unlocked with the keys of civilization. Many. It can determine many different relationships as it relates to your encounters and so forth and so on. So we have to have some love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice in us in order to be successful. You can't be hate-filled. Prophet Noble Jura Ali didn't teach us to be hate-filled or hateful. He taught us to learn to love Instead of hate. Mm, mm, mm. So all is well. But he said we're the founders of the holy city of Mecca. We are the founders. So what that's telling you? If it's telling you the Moors were the original founders of the holy city of Mecca and we know the Kushite were there, this is the same people. 
goodness gracious. So anyway, I ain't going to keep going on. Y'all got it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going I'm, I'm to open up the floor so we can hear from our family. I want to give honor to our brother Marvin Nathaniel with Bay for opening up the way, holding it up. Honor to our National Grand Secretary of the State, all of our Moorish kin who aided in preparation. Islam. So at this uh, time, we're going to call on our family to start six there. Phones are come forth from the panel either or all is well with me. It's not. It's long. It's long, Sister Curta Bay. It's long, Sister Curta. Uh oh, we got Curta Bay. Then we'll get to you, good brother. <laughs> it's long. It's long. It's long. Uh, that didn't you near Curta Bay? First, let me rise and give praises to our great God Allah. I give honors to our holy prophet, Noble Joy I give honors to Act One. I give honors to all my government officials. I give honors to uh, Brother Marvin Edwards Bay for holding down the fort. And I give honors to you, National Assistant Grand Sheik, for this grand, uh, powerful class tonight. I tell you, uh, uh, we appreciate, I know I do, uh, that hammer of repetition and you going over uh, some of the things that you have said before and, and a lot of it. Uh, you know, uh, we didn't, uh, those of us who's been here, uh, you know, we didn't heard it before, but it's nothing like using that hammer of repetition and you showing us again and showing us again. Stop uh, us, we can't hear you. Islam, can you hear me now? I can hear you clear. Oh, that must be. Say something again, Sister Curtis Bay. Islam, Islam family, can you hear me? Can y'all hear Sister Curtis Bay? Now we can. We can hear her. Can we hear now? Yeah, I hear clearly. Islam. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> gratitude. Um, uh, getting back to, to what I was saying. Yes. Um, uh, we give you honors, uh, National Assistant Grand Sheik, for this powerful, powerful class. And you covered so many things, and I just thoroughly enjoyed. And I encourage our Moorish kin who, like you said, if you hadn't heard this, uh, uh, do your research, go back and, and pull some of these things up that our National Grand, uh, Assistant Grand Sheik has got out there. All you got to do is pull it up. He then covered a lot of this. And it's so much great information that you need. And, and God, man, when you was talking about how uh, the people be saying, we don't need this information, uh, this information uh, uh, at this time. Well, if we don't, if you don't know where you come from, you ain't gonna know where you are going. So this information is powerful at this day and time. We definitely need this type of information, this type of teaching. And uh, you also covered about, uh, I loved it when you showed us the word more in the uh, Geneva Bible, which is one of the oldest uh, Bibles in the world. And I can remember uh, when we was in the, in the church, we was trying to get our <laughs> trying to get our hands on the oldest Bible in the in the world because we was coming into the 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 knowledge that you know that we had been uh, bamboozled uh, and and run them up. So uh, uh, we was trying to get our little hands on it, but uh, you know Allah had His time uh, for uh, for us and for me because it takes some more to teach them more how to be a more. And at that time, I was we was. Uh, dealing with the uh, pan-Africanism and all of that. And we was into that, but it's still, it was just so good to see you bring all this information, all these documents uh, uh, that you, you, you showing us. And, and you also talked about uh, how the, uh, the Greeks, uh, I love that too, how the Greeks, uh, they did not name us. Uh, you showed us how the Moria, Morintane, Mauritania, how they uh, adopted those names from the people and they put it in their language. You you made it clear how we named our own self. The, the Greeks did not name us. Really, the Greeks didn't do anything because we was here first. We were here first. And I don't understand why our people 
can't can't realize that. And last but not least, because I know our Moorish kin is is anxious to get in here. Uh, when you were showing those map uh, national assistant grand sheet, I can remember when we was in the church and and we were finding out how the Europeans had lied to us, and we got our hands on a on on an old map and versus you know the modern maps that they have now, and we saw how they had changed the maps. Hey, had Africa, Africa was so small, you had other continents on there that, that was bigger than Africa. But when we got a hold to the old map, Africa was, was the largest continent on there. But those Europeans, they had changed everything. And then they taught us this mess in school. So this stuff is ingrained in our people's minds, but that's all right. The truth is, is prevailing. The prophet said he snatched the cover off of all of it. And the truth is being revealed. And family, I just encourage you, keep an open mind. Open up your mind. Keep an open mind. If you can't accept it, put it on the shelf. Because it's definitely the prophet definitely will bring it back to you when the time is right. So uh, uh, National Sister Grand Sheik, I tell you. I definitely will be listening to this playback, and I encourage everybody on this call out there and in, in Facebook and everything, go back and listen to this teaching tonight. Grand class, gratitude, God, man, for letting me share. You got me all excited now. Islam. Islamism. And you see them pictures on the screen right now, Sister Curta Bay? Yeah. Yes, sir. And you know, in um, words... This is a Hebrew dictionary right there, but you see it. This is Moorish in the Hebrew dictionary. More and more, right? Uh huh. See it right there. More and more. Moorish, right? Yes. More land. All that, right? Yeah. Now, when you come into this particular one, like we showed you here, uh huh. You know, you got more right here, and they use more as Ethiopia's. Mm. You see? Yeah. Still talking about our people, right? Now, this right. is the Geneva Bible right here. Oh. The actual. Yes, yeah, excerpt from it. Oh, yeah. But they was using the term black more, Edmelik, the black more. Mm -hmm. Said unto Jeremiah, put now these old rotten rags and worn, it says, under thine arm holes in between the cords. And Jeremiah did so. So, wow. you know, this is right there in the book. Right. You know, now, had the European not changed that, the people would be using the word black and fighting over the word more. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, but it's the opposite. That's see, right. These are all the, see that say Geneva Bible, 1599. Wow. When did the King James Version come into? 1611, right? Right, right. So these are all the places in the Geneva Bible prior to the one they got, Jeremiah 13. Can the black more change his skin or the leopard his spots? You see? Wow. There it is again. Mm. Everywhere where they use, you know, a reference to a description of our people, they put that word more. Now, we know the Romans come up with the term black. This is all different scriptures. Right. What we use throughout the whole book. Wow. Come up, ye horses, and rage, ye chariots, and let the valiant men come forth, the black moors. Mm. And the Libyans, see, it's telling you who these people. We just told you that the people of Libya was the ancestors of the Moors, didn't we? Yes, right. <laughs> and ain't they saying the same thing? Man. Mm. All this information right here, and they're still buck. That's right. That's why I say either you on the spell or you the enemy. Yes. That's how I'm looking at you now. Most either you on the spell or you the enemy of mm -hmm. our people. Mm -hmm. Somebody told you to lie. That's right. They paying you to lie. Mm -hmm. You see? So, yeah. It's long. <laughs> you know, we got plenty more where that come from. It's like I showed, this book right here alone come from the 1600s. That's right. I go all the way back to where the English language disappeared out the book. Mm. You hear me? It's long. <laughs> it don't get no old. This stuff, these old books from the 1600s. That's right. Same thing. You know, but they'll still try to buck mm -hmm. and act like they don't know what's going on. Terrible. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> gracious. <laughs> you know, we got to stop lying to ourselves, family. That's it's right. It's too much information. It's the information age. That's right. They couldn't hide the truth if they wanted to. That's right. It's love. 
You hear me? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Oh, man. All right. Gratitude. Next more. <laughs> Gratitude, goddess and queen. Next more. Who else wants some? Bring it. As long as we stay ready. We ready. We have to ready. All right, Grandma. I'm just as moist as ever. Go ahead, Grandma. You got the flow. I'm all crunk up in here. Well, look here. Don't, don't change. Just long, mighty Mo. It's long, Morris America. That's my sister, Grand Chairman, coming in for a landing. And as I rise on the 7th, I give all praise to Allah and honor so I hold the prophet number to Ali, bringing us everything that it takes to save us as a nation. Islam, I give honors to our grand national flag, emblem and seal, divine constitution, and by laws of Moorish America. And I give honors to every, everything that it is to be a Moorish American. Upright, fearless, and independent, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, divine creed, nationality, status, and jurisdiction. Islam, and I have a nationality, not Negro, black, or color, but I know about that. And so I just want to support this grand magnanimous class and I give honor to all those who spoke before me and all those who speak after me and, uh, and here, there, and everywhere. Well, once again, you know, Black Code. You see Black Code, a name given collectively to a body of laws, statutes, and rules enforced in various southern states prior to 1865, which regulated the institution of slavery and particularly those forbidding their, their reception at public ends and on public conveyances. You see, so once again, just supporting that black, Negro, color, these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865. Well, you see, so therefore, but then we had another era of, you know, they come out civil rights. Because once again, they fight more, but yet they're not fighting being black. They're not fighting, uh, they're not fighting a slave label. Okay, they're fighting actually false, what they call racism. And you only say racism because you don't know the very history of the 14th Amendment, the 18th Amendment, you know, these privileges. You see, so so-called black Americans, you know, they, they ain't never, they've never been free. They just was created some, a special little citizenship, you know, a U.S. citizenship, all right, <laughs> by, that was granted by the Congress. But as you were speaking, the great God Allah sent to us a holy prophet, Noble Juali, to redeem us from our sinful ways. But yet we've been year after year, or cycle after cycle, has been pulled into that pool pit by Reverend Biscuit and, and Reverend, you know, Macaroni Tony and all these things, you know, looking at that pool pit. And so there's other degrees and symbology about that pool pit. And one I speak on, even when it comes to Eastern Star, the same thing. They call it the altar. But yet they call Negro, Black, and Color to the altar to just hold, join hands again. So what am I saying? I, can't, I continue. Because being Black, Negro, Colored, African American, ETC, and around election time, they love to say Black American. Well, don't you remember that, well, I think George Bush had to actually sign the, the permission slip for one to vote, okay? And so, therefore, <laughs> there's always going to be a debt on the head of so-called African-Americans, Negro, Black, and color. You have Black, according to law, you don't exist. It's called civil little martus, okay? So, therefore, uh, family, you must understand that you cannot demand rights when you have no standing in law, and when African American, black color, these are copyright that that the United States Corporation owns. Okay, so you no need to defend something that never was yours. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. See, but you must change the thought pattern, right? Because when you're talking about you as United States citizen, well, well, when was that? How did that come about? Oh, because you thought. We were born on the, brought here on the boat and all this stuff going on, right? Yeah, yeah, we've heard the same, you know, the same narrative over and over again. However, it is in the nature of that corporation, it is in the nature of the United States Corporation to re-enslave 
black Americans, African Americans, DTC, what they're going to call you this year, because it is profitable that the Congress, you know, set up many pitfalls, many obstacles, and also those who look just like us, because of the proper say, well, I'm going to just say uh, dirty more. Because probably say if you're not careful, your own brother will re-enslave you. You see, what is that? What's re-enslavement? Well, also enfranchisement, Stepper Towner Stepper Towner Act, Gold Social Security Act, you know, the Buck Act. You see, therefore you will see the demise. You know, so I just give honor to this class because it's an honor and a blessing that in this new era of time, okay, in this new era of time, the key of civilization was and is in the hands of the Asiatic nation. Well, look up Asiatic, earthbound, connected to the land, Moorish America. Well, because we inhabit this land, we are indigenous to this land. You see, so more is the Lord of the plane of soul and the Lord of the plane of things they benefit, and this is the spirit. But you got to study self. And, you know, well, sometimes my grandmother say, you know, don't wake them up too fast, because they're going to be mad when you wake them up. But at the same time, we're going to continue to be that beacon light of, of uh, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. We're not just sitting up, uh, we're not just blowing smoke up the old pipe, but we're actually sending that smoke signal that this is home. Uh, Marsh American government. So we give honor to the class, Dr. Shadu, and meant the Admiral Hedges well. Islam, we give honor to all those here and everywhere. Long live Marsh America. Islam. And Islam, we give honors to you as well, brother. For that drawing, see, on the screen, you know, I, I create a lot of these charts to try to make it easy for our people. You know, I have a measure I put together called the Father of, Co the Father of Colorism. And I have John Frederick Blumenbeck here, who is also mentioned in the African Fact Book, written by the people that actually are descendants on the mother continent. But, you know, it actually goes into the time that he came forth with these races, the Caucasian race, white race, Mongolian, yellow race, Malayan, brown race, Ethiopian, or black race, American, or red race. He was the one who came up with these classifications. So when you say you're a member of the black race, you're really saying that you are what John Blumenbeck made you. When you say you're brown, when you say you're yellow, white, red, all of this categorization was created by John Blumenbeck. So that's your daddy, if you think you're a black man. You got it? Then you're going to run around talking about, so y'all running around assuming it was the Roman that created the word more. It was the Latin that created the word more. It was the Spaniards that created the word more. And all of this is just conjecture. But we can come here and show you right now, it's right there before you, so you mean to tell me you ain't went against the word black yet? Because surely we got a European up here that come up with the terminology. Goodness gracious. Double standards is what it is. Islam, I hear somebody got their line open. Star six your phone. Uh -huh. or what you got to say? Islam. Oh, Islam. Uh, Islam, I was muted. Uh, I was. I wanted to, I wanted to uh, speak on the subject matter. Uh, grand class, uh, assistant national grand sheet, grand class. This is, uh, Sean Washington Hemel Tuck Bay L from the Michigan Territories. I rise and give all praise to God Allah. I give all honors to the prophet. I give all honors to this dear class of Morris government. I give all honors to one on ones, one on twos, the lessons, Zoom of the Nation, Book of Fire, and the Book of Ali. And the Holy Quran. And I give all honors to the great credit of Moist Flag, Government Flag, and everybody on the call like my voice can. Uh, it's a great, great class. Oh, yeah, I read about that. About the, uh, he was, I think, a European Jew. He created the brown, the yellow. I, I read, I was just in the room of the nation. It's the yellow stuff, the red. Man, come on, God. A lot of them make us them, them colors. That's uh, he's a European Jew, but that's the, that's their last name. Um, like we were speaking on the subject, 
it's telling you, it, it's in chapter 67, the divine words, he said, the other Asian and the nations, number four, the Indies, are, the India, Hindus are India, the descendants of the ancient Canaanites, Hittites, and Moabites from the land of Canaan. So the prophet was telling us, you know, I've been, I've been saying that people don't, they don't listen. You know, our people, like we said, be on the spell. You know, we're in a coma right now. So I've been saying that, and, you know, and, uh, that's the true name for Ethiopia is Abyssinia. So they just saying it was like it. You know, that's, that's Canaan too. And the Kush went into Canaan. You know, he's, a, he's the house of father and Kush is the uh, son. He's telling us why these lessons. <laughs> the prophet, you know, he that's why he went to Egypt and India. That's why he said Canaan. The Hindus are Canaan. That's why he said they were jumping up, up and down. You know, the uh, Hindu sisters, the Hindu sisters. You know, um, you got the Tuskegee over there in India. You know, the Hindus they real dark. You know. You know, they, they, they move more, you know, more, you know, more bikes. Um, that's what I was about to say. Like the, uh, Libya, the sins of putt, you know, that the prophet gave us, he gave us the keys to the vast state. You know, we gotta, oh man, I be thinking of all of this, and we saying this, I'm on the government car from Allah. I've been saying, I said, our people is under a spell, you know. They, they don't want to listen, you know. You know, they just sad, nah. And they think the Rome is they, the government, the European, the federal government, and, and, and you know, that constitution. That's not for us, you know. That's for them. That's a corporate. That's a form of corporation. You know, we can't, we can't live in that constitution. We got to live in this free national government. We got our own divine constitution. I've been telling people that today. I mean, you know, I be sticking on that, you know, you know, you know I, and I stick and go. I keep it moving. You know, I be, I study, I be, I study with the proper gave me the lessons. You know, maybe it's the land of Canaan. People didn't know that. You know, we was there in the places. We've been at, man, we've been around the world. We've been in the East, in the habit. We probably, you know, we went to Asia, China, Japan. I'm a ancient Muslim fathers, India, Hindustan, Pakistan. You know, we went to South America, Central, Atlantis, Hawaii, Fiji, you know, the Samoan Lions, Congo. You know, we those are more too. People don't know that. I've been I've been telling them that, you know, I keep it moving, I drop my seed. Uh I people just gotta wake up and get out this spell in here right now, you know. We under spell, you know. If you call yourself Negro, colored man, all that, I, that's that's your that's your really father. Back of back of bird, you know. He, he, that's, I know that's a Jewish name, so called. We was the ancient Jews. Morris was the Jews, but they, you know, they took our identity. Uh, well, I'm, you know, I'm just going, you know, keep keep doing this work, dropping my seeds, you know, learning, learning these lessons that the prophet gave me. So I know he gave me the key to the vast estate, you know. Well, grand class, peace, Islam, gratitude. Islamism. You know, and um, for those who are watching, they know I created a lot of these charts years ago, you know, trying to show our people what we were talking about. So I, you know, put DNA marker charts there showing you how we migrated which was the same way the prophet say we migrated and everything. But how did the prophet have all this knowledge way back then that they coming up with scientifically now through their observation? People don't ask themselves that question. You see what I'm saying? They have no idea. So I was showing them the origin of the Moorish, the Moorish gods before I even took my DNA test. You know, showed them the rechat structure, the rounded structure that was on the edge of the waters, the Mari Atlanticum, you know, as they called it. Like, come on, man. We can't play. And then when we go over and over here, they think it's made up. 
you know, Sumeru, Sumer, Amoru, Amorite, Mar, Mari. All this etymologically go back to the people. You see that more. I told Bati Bay that looked like him up there. You know, the ancient Moors of Samaria, Mesopotamia, Syria. These were all Moors. See, Mari. It's on the map, family. It's on the map, you know, and that's over there. And then when you come back, like I said, to Kemet, you see Mar and Amen. You see the connection between it. And it make it makes sense. You know? The Mari, Moorish gods, that's what it means, Moorish. More God than mere man. The Mari, the Moorish gods. We didn't make this up. This is real history. This is Mauritania in the modern time. Originally, Mauritania covered all this area over here. <clears throat> so, like I say, these, these are my archive um, collages that I put together to make, you know, this information more easier. For our people to get, you know, the high priest of Anu, we got people tell you that from Africa. See, the original Ibero Morrigan found in the same area. So, yep. <laughs> All I can say, man, that we can keep playing if we want to. And even right here, this is another measure, too, um, dealing with the Phoenicians. You know, and this is actually an old source from 1839, Charles Athen, Moros Por Medias. It says, uh, Adep, uh, well, Ad Pilantes, pardon self. This etymology is no, no merit, uh, value, pardon self. It says, Bocart, with more probability, deduces the name Mari from the Phoenician Maharam, meaning the farthest people, the people of the West. For after the Mari came the Western Ocean. So after you go into the region of the Mari, Mauritania, the Moors, then comes the Western Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean. That's what they're talking about. See? This is what they look like. Who is that? You are European. Them thick lips and thick nose. Here's the Moabites, which are the Mozabites, ancient Mari. We got a breakdown on a lot of this is coming from the works that I have in Van Sertma, you know, at the behest of our sister Dana Reynolds, that wrote four words in a lot of his works. Sullivan describes the indigenous inhabitants of North Africa as the Jetulians and the Libyans, both nomadic hunter gather cultures. He goes on to say their culture later mixed with the wave of sea migrants. Canaanites and Phoenicians. Goodness gracious. So what did Prophet Nova Drew Ali say? Who did he say we descend from? The new mixed cultures then began trade contacts with the Iberian Peninsula and became the ancestors of the historic Mari, Moors, and Numidia. All these different sources saying the same thing, even though this comes from our scholars. Their descendants are Today, the Amazic in the Maghrib, right? Mozabite, the Torega, who lived in scattered communities across Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Mali, Niger, Mauritania. So they all over the place. Stop playing, people. That's a Mozabite right there. See, Algeria, and that's Mozabite, M-O-Z-A-B-I-T-E. It's hard to see, but that's... Mozabite. Here's a group of Mozabites. You see me? I, I, I got to keep using the hammer repetition till they get it. These are Mozabites. See it right there? Group. The Mozabite. Mozabites are the Moabites, people. When we talk about the ancient Moabites, and I always like to talk about how they use that Tefnic script of the ancient, you know, uh, Mozabites for the movie Black Panther. See them right there? See the Wakandan alphabet? It was inspired by the Tefnic alphabet of the Mozabites. Huh? Come on, man. Stop it. Stop playing. Stop playing, people. You know, so they be throwing the stuff out there. But how many of our people really get it? 
how many of them really get it? That's what I want to know. So, okay. Is there any other more who would like to come forth and exercise day five? Islam. Islamism without the schism. This is deep. 
And we need this information because the Europeans are not going to teach us anything of this sort so that we can find our trace back, you know, to our origin. So gratitude to our grand class this evening, gratitude for waking us up to the reality of ourselves. Islam. In Islamism, Brother Miller Bay, we give honors to you. You know, you know, and um, it, it ain't strange, brother, that, you know, a lot of our people, like we always say, they end up uh, going in opposition to the truth, even though you put it out there, you know, right there before them. And um, I created various different charts, you know, um, showing our people, and they tried to go against that. Like I gave them a chart. Like the one I have on the screen for those who can see, you know, we Moors are the ancient of days, indigenous to the planet, and our sacred garden is the world. You know, this is basically what I stated. And if you go into it, I showed them the connection of everything, Atlantis, you know, the breakdown of the name Egypt. I gave them the original name of Noah, which is actually Menachem, the Nock in the middle is actually what a Noah aspect come from. Menachem, Mina, you know, is often being depicted as a relation to Noah in certain uh, scholarship circles, you know, but the seed of Menachem, which is Noah, which Cam, you know, which they call Ham. And then he gave birth to four sons, according to the Piscean records, you know, which was Cush, Mesra, or Mesura, and then you had Put, and you had Kanana. Now from these seeds, I tried to make it plain to the people. You had from the Kushites, the Meru, which we spoke of earlier, Meru Kushites, which the Hinduist Kushites come through this lineage. You know, are known as the Meroi, right? They all had that MNR root connected. These are the Saba, or the Seba Moors. These are the Moors that inhabited the holy city of Mecca. These are the Moors that established the Moor holy city of Mecca right here. But then you had the Mesra, or the Mesura, and you had the Mar and Mera, and these are the Hikopter Moors. This is where your Amin Ra, you know, and all of that come into play, but there's still a connection to each other. You see? Then you had Put, you know, and this is the Mari and the Moor, the Numidic, the Numidians. And then you have Kanana, Canaan, the Emori or the Amaru, which are the Mu'aba Moors. Right here, we put that together so that our people would be able to comprehend this and see how this word, you know, when you change it from El Moria, Lemuria, you know, and you come up with Mari, if you remove all the vowels, that M and R will still be there. You cannot do that with the word black. And go back to no ancient people. You can do it with the word more, though. That M and R, if you strip it of the vowels, M and R will ever be present. Mir, Mera, Meru, Meroi, Mor. And this is what they don't get. And that's simple. They don't get no plainer than that. So Islam, is there any other more who would like to come? Islam. To the Islam, Brother Muhammad, Bay. Gratitude, National Grant, National Assistant Grant, Sheikh of Morsh, America. Uh, Islam, uh, I want to give praise to our Father God, Allah, and honors to his holy prophet, our holy prophet, Nubu Ali. And I want to give honors to absolutely everything more should be. The time won't be too long. As always, man, such a grand, magnanimous demonstration, God, man. We appreciate you. You know, watching and listening uh, to the presentation and, and the Moorish Ken have to give much, much honor to Prophet Noble Juali because what this reminded me of, what, what it brought to my mind was, you know, the Prophet taught us that understanding is the rock upon which man builds himself. And this whole presentation deals with right understanding when it talks about the key, see, we know that the key is relative to the nation. So the prophet brought us the right understanding of who we are. 
our nationality, which deals with all of the nations, the history, the culture, the languages that you presented this evening. This is so great. I just want to say that, you know, without, you know, like, like it's always taught in our class, you know, they say that uh, our people suffer for the lack of knowledge. No, 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 no. Especially nowadays, because there's so much an abundance and flood. They call this the information age, but all information is not beneficial. So our people suffer from the lack of knowledge of the truth. And this is what you presented this evening. Gratitude. You presented the true history, the true genealogy, etymology, whatever you want, whatever uh, particular aspect that you want to go into in terms of what? Getting over that mental illness, that mental state of slavery whereby we suffer from an identity crisis. And this is the information. This is the knowledge of the truth that our people need to have in order for them to come out of that state of mental slavery. So I just, I mean, there's so much more I could say. Grand class, Islam, peace and love. Islam and grand measure, brother Muhammad Bey. Gratitude for the drawing. Thank you for your contribution. Well, at this time, we're going to go to our officials. You know, starting with our beloved goddess and queen, Sister Alcetta Moon L. Islam, are you there, goddess? Islam, is there any other uh, uh, sister? Well, I guess she probably Islam. Islam. Islam, the goddess and queen is, is present. Okay. Islam, goddess. Islam. Islamism. Gratitude. First, let me Gratitude. rise and give all praises to Allah and all honors to our Prophet Nubu Drew Ali, honors to our Moorish American government, our officials of our government, and our citizens. Honors to you, God, man, our National Assistant Grand Sheikh of Moorish America, Dr. Shadu Ametia Muhyiddin Shepswe for opening our conference call according to law. Honors to our Goddess and Queen, Dr. Sainati Nuheta Ruel for taking registration, reading our subject chapter of the week. And honors to our Moorish kin for bringing four day grand measures of understanding. Honors on the topic for tonight's class. The key of civilization was and is in the hand of the Asiatics of North Asiatic nations, the Moorish, who were the ancient Moabites and the founders of the holy city of Mecca, Islam. You know, the prophet made it real simple and he gave it to us from the very beginning. And he told us, he asked us a question, who made you? Allah, the father of the universe. He asks us another question. What is your nationality? Moorish American. He told us his, Moorish, his nationality is Moorish American. I don't know why it's such a controversy, but the prophet did tell us one thing. He said our people don't want to accept who they are because it's except that they're Moorish, except their nationality, except their culture, except because it's theirs. That's the hardest thing for ex to, for them to accept. They'll be Irish. They'll be every kind of other ish except their own. <laughs> and that alone demonstrate the mental slavery that our people are under. We trying to get up out of it and they trying to stay or go deeper. <laughs> Man, the prophet did tell us we have a job. <laughs> But you ever keep saying we have a magnanimous job to do. And when you really look up the word magnanimous, you realize that, or should I say you realize why the prophet said we're a mean, stiff neck set of people and they ain't never did any, anything except by the point of a sword. So we're going to have to wait till, as the prophet said, the European give up on us. We're going to have to wait till we see the all nation turn against the United States. We're going to have to wait until we see the race wall, until we see the hail fall from the sky that the size of baseballs or golf balls. We're going to have to wait 
And we still we see the United States divided in half, divided in two, separate. I mean, which point of the sword do they do they want to, to see before they accept that they're Moorish? And why do you have to wait that long until you're under total constraint and bondage? As if we're not already in it, because this is not living. This is surviving because we cannot prostrate in enemy territory. I mean, everything has been demonstrated, but yet they still go against the truth. But the prophet did tell us we ain't gonna be able to save all anyway. He told us that. He said just he said he's gonna try. So therefore, all we gotta do is continue to plant that seed and let the Allah and the Prophet do the increase. Because our people just stiff headed. Just keep the love up front, keep our profit up front, and save those that want to be saved. Bring them to our, our Moorish American government. Let the prophet do the increase. Just plant the seeds of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Islamism. Gratitude for coming forth. Peace and love to all my Moorish kids. Islam. In Islam, Sister Alset, we give honors to you for that drawing. Praise be to Allah, Islamism without the schism. But let us call forth our national grand mufti, Dr. Kunshu Mark Heru Bey. Islam, you there, grand man? He's on a mission, more gratitude to Allah for making a great god allah be the guide and we know our brother about the business of our father god allah well all right well let us call forth then our grand national secretary of state says she at the ready <laughs> sister shepsu or Maat and putu to come and bay islam you there goddess and queen yes you are <laughs> islam Islam, Islam, Islam. Woo-wee. First of all, I want to rise giving all praises to our Father God Allah and giving honor to our prophet, Noble Jerah Lee, the last prophet in these days and times, giving honor to our Moorish American government, all of our officials, staff, buff angels, muftis, divine ministers, most especially our Moorish kin. Giving honor to all those Moors that spoke before me, all those Moors that will speak after me. Giving a special honor to our Consul General, State of Texas, Dr. Marvin Edwards Bay, that opened our meeting according to law, also um, for taking registration, and um, giving a special honor for our Consul General for um, um, aiding and assisting in uh, bringing forth our class this evening. Giving a special honor to Act 1, also to our host instructor, our National Assistant Grand Chief, of Moorish America, Dr. Shadow Messi, I'm going to head to step to the well for this grand, grand class, Dr. Shahid. I tell you, um, this class was so powerful, um, as always, and I always uh, enjoy hearing about our history, you know, and I can't hear it enough. Just like uh, when the prophet encourages us to study our divine constitution and bylaws of Moorish America, to study our Quran. Every time uh, one goes into this, uh, a revelation is received. And when we look at our subject matter, I too, coming from the chapter 67, the divine origin of the Asiatic nation, the key of civilization was and is in the hands of the Asiatic nations, the Moorish, who were the ancient Moabites and the founders of the holy city of Mecca. And um, as Dr. Dendra stated, <laughs> Uh, being able to go back into the books of 1400s, 1500s, things of that nature, to see that um, they were actually speaking about the Moors. And as you stated, we were already here by the time uh, Greeks and Romans got on the scene. But if you look at the so-called uh, Greeks today and uh, what may be perceived as uh, European countries, uh, when you brought forth that demonstration in reference to Spain, Italy, Kemet, and all these other, India, 
they all were people of hue. And um, when I was reflecting on it, and you put out a, a powerful question, how many are willing to accept the truth? Um, and as you stated, you know, if you hear it from a European, well, that's got to be the end all be all. But when you have a prophet that has been divinely prepared by our creator to send us the truth, you know, um, then we don't want to hear it. But um, you cannot banish the truth. You cannot uh, try to cover up the truth. The thing about it is truth always was, is, and ever more to be. That is an attribute of our creator. And so are we. So when we look at us being a divine people who come from a source of divinity, um, when we look at um, why it has been so important to keep the nations of hue at odds with one another, it's a reason for that. It's a reason to um, keep uh, the fighting going along, the slaughtering, the continue to commit genocide of one people over the other, to, um, to keep something going, which uh, the proper terms as um, a demarcated thought pattern. As long as you're doing that, you're not thinking, because you're coming from a level of passion. We just came out of that uh, last foe of misery um, last week. So the thing about it is, when we turn or flip the coin, and we ask ourselves the question, what would happen when all of us unite? We're speaking about the divine origin of the Asiatic nations. All of these nations of Hugh coming together in peace and harmony, still honoring our nationalities, but recognizing the fact that we are all children of the one father. So this is why it is imperative that our prophet gave to us that all Moorish Americans must learn how to love instead of hate. When you're demonstrating from a level of love divine, then you bypass uh, the idiosyncrasies or uh, the prejudices and things that have been uh, indoctrinated here on these Western shores. You rise above that to being able to see things from a universal level. When you're able to look at each other and see the gods in each other, then you're not thinking about warring and uh, seeing how you can get over or this is mine and you got yours to get the Bible of the fittest mentality because all are one and equal to seek their own destiny. So when we go back to our ancient forefathers state of mind, when we uh, look at how the key of civilization in the days of old, in the ancient days, was ruled under love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And it is ruled under love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Yeah. So we just give much honor to our prophet for bringing these truths to us. And it is definitely imperative and key that we study our own history as we've given to us by our prophet. Do the research. That way you're able to be what you know. So gratitude more for calling me forth. Much peace and love to all of my Moorish kids. It's off. And gratitude for the measure, Grand National Secretary of State. Powerful. Praise be to Allah. Islamism without the schism. All right. Well, we might as well call on our Grand National Chairman now, Dr. Akin Acton Pert M. Heru Tooth to come and bait. Islam, you there, Grand Man? Uh, can you hear me? Man, I hear the love, though. <laughs> Islam. <laughs>
and be the message that you bring. That's why we got our own Holy Quran, divine constitution. We got our own flag, we're a natural seal and emblem. We got everything that belongs to, to free the entire people of planet mud. This is us. We're just blessed. And so I just want to say, we love you. Islamism without the schism. Peace and blessings. And peace and blessings to you as well, Grand Man, and all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you will continuously do. Praise be to Allah. You know, for all the work that you set out here to give us a ability to be able to come and exercise our five. Goodness gracious. Well, all right. Speaking of exercising the five, let us call forth our national Grand Sheik, Dr. Serapis Amin Ra El. Islam, National Grand Sheik of Moorish America. Islam, you that grand man? Islam, let's give our Sheik a little second here. Sometimes these little apparatuses go to acting crazy. Go ahead, Brother Grand Sheik. If you're speaking, we can't hear you. We see you unmuted. Uh -huh. It looks like um, the Grand Sheik is having technical difficulties because I see him on the board. Brother Grand Sheik? Okay, he just dropped. Uh, he'll get back on in a minute. Inshallah. Gratitude. Islam. Gratitude. Yeah, we know he'll come back in here. Them Roman contraptions, they always be acting crazy. <laughs> yes. Goodness gracious. I think this little 5G stuff they got going on up here is supposed to have been made it better, as they call it, but made it worse. <laughs> if you ask you me. You already know. <laughs> They trying to fix them and broke it. Goodness gracious. Islam, yeah, she could definitely come in here. But yeah, we want to give honors to the Moors for checking in, you know, and, and, and uh, really doing their due diligence, you know, because it's good to reiterate because some of our people ain't heard the truth, unfortunately. You know, they haven't heard it, so we like to go back down there and give it to them. How about now? Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. We hear you loud and clear with Islam. divine ears, angelic ears. Go ahead, Sheik. Islam, Islam. Apologize for this phone. We give a, a lot of praise. Huh? At least we got a way to communicate with our more skin. Grand demonstration. To me, uh, give a prophet highest honors as well as uh, those of more national held fast till the rest of reinforcements to get here and get assembled. And this grand demonstration that we know as our government is on the manifest. Well, we may only, not only teach uh, our, our people who they are, but we live it on the day, from a day-to-day -day basis as uh, we have various teachers to give us uh, the historic lessons that turns into from a, from a, uh, uh, a curse to a blessing. And this has been a grand uh, demonstration, one of those grand demonstrations uh, our sister Grand T has marveled in and set out a cold measure. We uh, are always in search of the science of knowledge where it 
build up, up from the character of the, that not Negro, but that one that called Negro, and and come find out that you're not none of those, and you find out that you are more than what you appear to think you are. You have to get in, in accord with the Moors of our ancestors. And we go all the way back. Oh, man. As one that spoke on it, we don't have no uh, further dispute or, or refute of what one has set out because we know it's the truth. And uh, see, you only get one uh, giving us a measure talking about where we are uh, Negro, colored, black. Ethiopian. No, you're not a Moor. The Moors was over here, and the Moors was over there. But we see, uh, my, my ministers just broke it down. How we Moors? And then not only did they, they break it down, uh, ones who brought it over here to them, like a, uh, a prophet, uh, El Haj Jarif of Duali also known as Prophet Number Jew Ali, gave us the time, gave us the uh, break up your sleep here in the morning. Stop it, but you will. Stop calling yourself Negroes. I'm saying that because we know that's not who we are. Let's be who we are. Let's be that a beacon light and a beacon star. Much love to you all and your love to each other. It's fine. January 15, 1929, warning from the prophet to be read in all meetings. I hereby inform all citizens and must hand all radical, agitated speeches while they work in the homes on the streets. We are for peace and not destruction. I'm glad your card to your parents. It causes confusion. Remember, your card is for your salvation. Failure to obey these orders will be a severe consequence. We have to love truth, peace, freedom. And justice, and when these principles are violated, justice then must take its course. Any citizen, a group of citizens, who hold religious feelings toward the government or the profit of violating the divine covenant of the Moors movement will receive a reward from God for their unjust deeds. All true Moors will and must obey the law as laid down to them by the prophet. They lose confidence in their prophet and should turn in their guard and but each one of the German affairs. And we turn to the state where I the prophet found you. This is all in the land movement. Found about the prophet number two out it. And if the prophet is not right, <clears throat> the government is not right. The prophet therefore said not that the van please do all more to America. And they do their part in protecting the prophet and the government. This is an everlasting movement found by the prophet through the will of Allah to redeem the people from their simple ways. By all the prophet number two out it. This divine warning is the supreme laws now and will be enforced by the said government hereby. Islam, Islam, Islam. I hold the covenant of the Asiatic nation. You are the children of one father provided for by the care. And the rest of one mother has given you son. Let the bond of affection therefore unite thee with thy brothers that peace and happiness. They dwell in our father's house. And when you separate in the world, remember the relation that binds you to love and unity, and prefer not a stranger for thy own blood. Thy brothers in adversity assist him. If our sisters in trouble, the sick or not, so shall the fortunes of our father contribute to the support of his whole race, and his care be continued to you all, and your love to each other. Islam, Islam, Islam. This meeting is supposed to close according to Act 2 of our divine constitution and love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Go in peace, boys. Long live, Morris America. Peace. Peace. Uh, Morris American government. Thank you, Grand Chief. Grand Chief.
Yes, sir. We love you more. We love you more. Yes, sir. Frank Class. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, We'll definitely see y'all in Sunday school tomorrow. They know who the boys is now. Yes, Lord. Love love Want to give honors to our family out there in social media, too. Brother Born, Dog, Charles, Boy, Dale. Yes, Lord. Asian Johnson Bay, Tyriff Bay, Atham, Tyriff Bay, uh, creator of the Boundless Universe, Nova Brian. We love all y'all. See y'all in the next session. Peace and love, Morris. It's Lord. It's love.